And welcome back to our series on 70-740 certification for Microsoft Windows. In this section, we're going to begin talking about installing and managing Windows services. So as always, there are a couple of different ways we can manage uh, Windows services on our systems. The first one is with the graphical user interface, in which case we are going to be using the Windows Server Manager. The second one is to use PowerShell, which Microsoft is pushing very much for people to use. So we're going to cover both of these in this video. So we're going to go ahead and start off with the Windows GUI. And here we have, uh, we are logged into our Windows machine and we want to go ahead and install and remove some services. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and install the web server since that's a fairly simple system to install. There's a couple of different ways we could do this, as always with computers. Uh, the first one is right here on the server manager dashboard. We can click add roles and features, and that will begin us through the begin wizard or uh, install wizard. The second option is up here in the manage menu of the server manager we can click and there we have add roles and features as well uh, this method is a little bit easier to get to when you are looking at different aspects of server manager the manage is always there so I'm gonna go ahead and start the add roles and features wizard and it comes up with some basic before you begin information we'll go ahead and click next Installation type, whether it's going to be a feature inst installation or if we're going to be installing remote desktop services. Uh, we'll stay with the default and click next. Here we can check which server it is we want to install in. Uh, right now we want to install on the current server, so I'm going to go ahead and click next. And then it asks us which server roles to install. And as we see, there are a lot of different roles to install here. Uh, on the next page, if I just simply click next, there's also features that I can install as well. Sometimes the, what you're looking for is a feature as opposed to a role, so you have to look at both of these tabs. I'm going to go back to the server roles because what I specifically want is web services, which is right here on the server roles page. Now when I check this, it's going to pop up and ask me a couple of questions. For instance, do I want to include the IIS management console or the management tools for this system? And in this case, absolutely. Uh, I want to be able to manage the service that I'm now installing. There may be some situations where I have multiple servers, multiple front end web servers that are all going to be managed from one back end system. So then the front ends don't necessarily need the management tools, but the back end does. So I'm going to go ahead and say add features. If we look over here on our menu or on our, our list over here, we can see that there's now a few other items here we have to specify for the web server roles and the role services. Let's keep clicking next until we get there. Uh, we're not installing any features. We were just doing the one role. And then specific to IIS, there are some features, some role services that we need to configure and that is right here. So do we want the standard IIS or uh, Internet Information Services installation or do we want to include ODBC logging? Um, do we want to include uh, URL authentication or authorization and Windows authentication? Do we want to include FTP and so on? Uh, go ahead and click Next. It gives us confirmation page along with a checkbox to restart automatically if required. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say yes, even though IIS install should not require an install or reboot. Click install and the installation process begins.
And through the powers of video editing, we just zoomed right through that install process. Uh, sometimes when you finish the installation, you will see a message up here on this page that says, now that the install is done, there are some additional steps that need to be completed. Uh, it, or quite possibly, if I click close here, uh, sometimes this little flag up here in the server manager will also show that there's additional steps that need to be completed. Uh, currently there are none. So that was how we install a feature. In order to uninstall it, it is essentially the same process. We click up to manage and in this time we click remove roles and features. Again, let's walk through the wizard. It's same as what we did before. However, this time we see that we have features we can uninstall. So let's go ahead and uncheck IIS. Next, next, and remove. And now it will go ahead and remove the service from the system. And I believe prompt us to reboot when it's done. So there we go. That is the quick and easy way to be able to install and uninstall features off of a Windows server with the server manager GUI. However, PowerShell is also an important aspect that needs to be mentioned here because it does help us automate a lot of our lives, helps make our process or jobs a whole lot easier in a lot of ways. So let's go ahead and log into our server core machine and we will go ahead and set, set up the Windows features on here. So first thing we need to find out is what features are available. And for that case, there is a PowerShell command called get-windows-feature. And if we simply click OK, what it does is it looks at all of the possible features that are on this Windows server and lists them out. You can see some of these, for instance, Windows PowerShell has an X next to it, meaning it's installed. Whereas others, such as Windows Process Activation Service, are, do not. So it is not installed. So if we go ahead and scroll up, then we can see through some of the items that we have here as options. And again, if I wanted to install the web server, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. I can see here is my web server, and it is called web-server. That is the name of the feature I want to install. So for that to happen, I'm gonna go back into my PowerShell and I'm going to use the command install windows feature web dash server. And now we have a couple of different options. The first one, if I do a dash, the first option that I wanna type in here is include all sub features. So we saw there that we had the web server and then we had all the other features under it. We had the management tools, we had the uh, FTP, we had the different authentication types and whatnot that were available for the web server. If I want to install all of those along with the web server, I would use this include all sub features. It would automatically include everything that was there. If I don't necessarily want those all those tools there is however another option such as the include management tools which I probably want to include as well so I go ahead and type that and I just simply hit enter and it begins the install process And when the install process is done, it gives us out this nice little uh, report of uh, the status of the success. It was true, it did succeed. Is a restart needed? No, no restart is needed. Uh, exit code, success, and then feature result. Well, there was more than just the web server feature included. By default, it includes some common HTTP default documents and so on. They were all su uh, successfully installed and no reboot is necessary. If I was to go back to a couple of steps and go back to my uh, get windows feature command and I hit enter, 
Again, it lists out all the features that I have. I'm going to scroll up to our web server. There we go. Our web server now has an X in it. Uh, the web server core and web server common are all installed. However, some of the other options, such as web dev publishing, the custom logging, uh, which were not included in the default web server feature, were not installed with this config configuration so if get windows feature list is lists out all the features and then install windows feature installs the features if I want to uninstall the feature I use the uninstall windows feature command windows feature and in order to uninstall, again, I type in the name of the feature that I want to remove. And I'm going to include the management tools as well. Go ahead and say OK. And there we have it. The uninstall work uh, succeeded correct completely success was true this time however restart needed the answer is yes uh, the exit code is actually success restart needed it's truncated there with the dots and it gives us a nice little warning you must restart this server to finish the removal process so in order to fully uninstall windows server i'm sorry the web server off of windows server here i have to reboot the machine for the installation to complete And there we have it. That's how we install and uninstall Windows feature out of Windows Server uh, using both the graphical user interface with Server Manager or using PowerShell, uh, which can be done both on the GUI systems as well as the server core.